Episode 141. It's revenge time. Afternoons at the news agency usually went by at a leisurely pace. Part of the staff would be gathering news, while the others who had finished the tasks at hand would sit back and relax until the end of the workday. In Team 2's office, Hillary looked at Rachel calmly and asked, So how are you going to punish Penelope? Quit being so secretive and let me in. Rachel looked up and smiled. If I tell you, are you going to go ahead and tell Eric immediately? Hillary stuck her tongue out at Rachel. Well, you looked so devastated that it scared me. Since I joined the news agency and started working with you, this is the first time I've seen you cry. I know how important that photograph is to you. That's the only reason that I told Eric about it, with the hope that Joshua Taylor would come and cheer you up. Rachel gave a cold, hmm, and said, Even then, I can't tell you. Why? Rachel smiled mischievously. Because that would spoil the fun. Hillary exclaimed, Rachel, you're being mischievous. Ignoring Hillary, Rachel stared into the corridor outside the office. After a while, she saw Penelope walk out of the office in front of hers. Penelope then walked over to the managing editor's office and stood at the entrance. It seemed like this time, William was really angry at Penelope, as he had not called her to meet up all morning. However, she was eventually allowed to enter his office after a short exchange standing at his office doorway. Then, as if having waited forever for this moment, Rachel immediately stood up and sent a message on her cell phone. You can come up now. After this, she sat back with her back straight and announced, It's showtime, Hillary. Puzzled, Hillary quickly followed Rachel's gaze and looked outside. About five minutes later, the elevator chimed and a plump, heavily made-up woman stormed out as the elevator doors parted. The reception lady hurriedly stood in her way and asked, May I know who you're looking for? And do you have an appointment? The woman frowned and replied impatiently, I'm here to look for William. Mr. William Diaz, do you have an appointment? If not, I'm afraid we can't let you in. The woman laughed derisively. Since when do I need an appointment to see William? Get out of the way. The woman pushed open the entry barrier as she said this. The receptionist was stunned for a moment before hurrying forward to the door to stop her. Hey lady, what's your problem? This is a news agency and it's not open to the public. The woman halted and then sneered. The public? You're telling me I'm just anyone? Fine, let me tell you who I am. I'm William's wife. On hearing this, the receptionist looked surprised. What? Mr. William is married? Seeing the worker's reaction, the woman quickly figured out that William had never announced he was married. She gave a sarcastic smile and roughly shoved the receptionist. Get out of my way. She charged in and grabbed a random worker, asking, Where is William's office? The woman was too aggressive, and the staff member could only point to William's office nervously. Without another word, the woman strode towards the office. It seemed that William's door was locked, but the woman had obviously come prepared. With a wave of her hand, she summoned the locksmith she had brought along. The man stepped forward, bent over the doorknob, and started working immediately. Within a few seconds, the lock was opened with a click and thus unlocking William's office. The woman forcefully pushed the door open. The scene that greeted her was rather unsightly. The neatly dressed William was sitting back on his chair with his eyes shut and with a most satisfied expression on his face. Penelope, on the other hand, was bent over, but it wasn't clear what she was doing 
since she was behind the desk. The couple must have been too engrossed in their indulgence and have not heard the commotion just then when the woman was trying to access his office. As the office was now suddenly flung open, William jumped from his chair. After he stood up straight and saw the woman, his eyes widened and his hands immediately reached down in an attempt to cover his crotch. Although no one got to see anything explicit, there was a very little left to the imagination. The little crowd that had gathered to watch the scene unfold was now staring with their mouths agape. Even Rachel, hidden among the crowd watching this, felt like she had to recognize Penelope's efforts. This Penelope would do anything just to suck up, in all sense of the word, to William. As Rachel was still trying to get over her surprise, she heard William calling out in shock. Jill, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? The woman shrieked and stormed up to him. With a hand, she grabbed Penelope's hair and pulled her out of under the desk where she was hiding. As Penelope emerged, everyone could see that her clothing was undone and her lips were a little red and swollen. It was very obvious what had been going on. The woman was livid and raised a hand to deliver a sharp, tight slap across Penelope's face. You vixen! Penelope was stunned for a moment and then suddenly, as if remembering something, she reached out to shove the woman aside, screaming, Willie, help me, quick! Willie, how affectionate. The woman mockingly laughed and immediately delivered yet another sound slap across Penelope's other cheek. Following this, she forcefully shoved Penelope, who fell onto the ground. In her fury, Penelope got back on her feet in no time. Now, both sides of her face were swollen and the metallic taste of fresh blood was in her mouth. She pointed at the woman and hollered, Who are you? And what right have you got to hit me? That was for the dirty little deed you just performed. Penelope's chest was heaving with anger. Why is it any of your business what my boyfriend and I do together? Who are you? You're hitting someone for no reason. I'm calling the police. What a day it had been. She had initially wanted to punish Rachel, but she had been unexpectedly insulted in return and even despised by William. She had then had to put aside her ego and try to please him. But now this woman appeared out of nowhere. As she picked up her cell phone to call the police, a hand reached out to stop her. She was stunned for a moment. Looking up, she saw William standing in front of her. What do you think you're doing? Penelope's eyes turned red at once, and she yelled, Whoever this woman is, she hit me. Of course, I'm calling the police. I'm going to sue her. You will not. William spoke firmly. Penelope paused. Why not? Why not? The woman stepped forward with an agitated and furious expression. You, who gives you the right to call the cops? I have every reason to hit you. Penelope widened her eyes. You, you, what's your relationship with William? The woman was getting increasingly annoyed at Penelope's attitude. We're husband and wife. Tell me you know nothing about it. Stop acting innocent. As she said this, the earlier scene came to her mind, provoking her once again. She took a step forwards with fury, grabbed Penelope's hair, and gave her another slap. You husband snatcher, I'll teach you what seducing another woman's man means. I'll kill you. As she spoke, she punctuated her angry remarks by throwing punches at Penelope. Penelope, on the other hand, was so confused she couldn't react. That woman was William's wife? How was that possible? Weren't she and William about to get married? How on earth had she suddenly become the third party? 
Not knowing why, she suddenly recalled how she had mocked Rachel for being a third party. And now, as Penelope stood there stunned, the woman kicked her in the stomach. She bent in pain and cried, Let me go. I don't know. I don't know. At this point, as if suddenly remembering something, she jumped and directed a clenched fist at the woman. I'll teach you a lesson. How dare you hit me? However, before her punch could even land on the woman's face, William had reached out to grab her hand. He warned her in a low voice. Penelope, don't hit Jill. With her hand now held by William's grip, it gave the woman another opportunity to tightly slap her on the face. This one was a vicious slap indeed, for the woman had used her nails to scratch her skin, leaving angry scratch marks at the same time. Penelope had been beaten into a stupor by now. She lifted her leg to kick William. After his crotch was kicked, he kneeled over in pain and could not stand upright. No one in the crowd that had gathered dared to step forward and stop the brawl. As Rachel looked at all of this coldly, a sharp expression appeared on her face. Hillary was astonished, to say the least. Penelope was now like a fallen villain, beaten into a corner and unable to retaliate. She squatted there like a mad woman, scheming how she could defeat the other two. But how could she stand up to the couple? This was a complete disaster. Hillary whispered in Rachel's ear, How did you know William is married? They had no access to his details. Furthermore, when Penelope had announced her relationship with William in a big way, William had never denied it. Hence, everyone in the news agency had no idea he was married. Rachel lowered her gaze and said, I once accidentally saw a man's wedding ring in his office. Then, when Penelope was bragging that they were going to get married and showed off her ring, I noticed that the ring was different from the one I saw in his office. They weren't a pair. That was when I became suspicious. And on another occasion, I saw a few strands of hair on William's shirt, but they were short, so they couldn't have been Penelope's. So, I became more certain. Hillary raised her thumb. Brilliant! Quietly, without saying another word, Rachel continued watching the scene in the room unfold. Looking at Penelope, she was sure that Penelope had been cheated on by William. Objectively speaking, she was an innocent victim. The main player of this tragedy had been William. That was the reason why she had held back all this time. She had even considered warning Penelope. But what Penelope had done to her today had crossed the boundaries. That was why she had asked for help from Joshua to check William's background. William had worked at other news agencies previously, and Joshua was well-connected with various news agencies. It hadn't been at all difficult to get a hold of William's wife's number. Episode 142 Meeting Madgery What followed next goes without saying. Although Penelope was in a tragic state, Rachel felt no sympathy for her. Looking down, she turned around and walked back to her own office. Hillary followed her, groveling. What do you think will happen now? What will happen, Rachel said calmly. Penelope will probably be fired and we won't have to deal with her anymore. Hillary nodded enthusiastically. It serves her right. The matter was quickly resolved. William owed his successful career to his wife. And of course, he would do anything to appease her. Hence, he fired Penelope and had her leave immediately, without even giving her time to pack and retrieve her belongings. As to her threats of suing them, William said arrogantly, Go ahead and sue us. At worst, I'll pay a compensation fee. We were both consenting adults. What has it got to do with my wife that you're so low down? Penelope was firmly escorted out of the office, despite her violent objections. And even after being escorted out, she stood outside the agency, shouting and yelling. Whenever something came to mind, her eyes would light up and she would yell out to William's wife. You think William is clean? 
Let me tell you, I'm not his first affair. We have a worker by the name of Rachel, and both of them have something going on too. They slept together as well. Look at Rachel. She looks like a vixen. As soon as she said this, William's wife immediately turned around and glared at Rachel, who was already in her office. Rachel didn't know whether to laugh or cry. This Penelope, she was rotten to the core. Rachel stood up immediately. Penelope, are you mentally sick? William quickly denied it. Honey, that's utter rubbish. There's no one else, only this one, and I admit my mistake. Honey, please forgive me. His wife frowned and moved her gaze from one person to the other, back and forth, not knowing who to believe. Penelope laughed scornfully. Look at her. Which man wouldn't want her? It's her. She had an affair with William. Rachel threw her hands up in defeat. This was crazy. Hillary immediately spoke up. This is funny. You've admitted that our Rachel is pretty. If she indeed had an affair with the managing editor, would you have stood a chance against her? She's so pretty, she could have any man she wants. At these words, Penelope was fuming. Any man she wants? Well, then it depends which man would have her. Her brother's a cripple, and she needs a lot of money for medical treatments. Who would want a woman like that? The managing editor once even wanted to lend her two million dollars. Her face was swollen from the beating and was now hardly recognizable. But still, she was trying to take Rachel down with her. She pointed at the people of Team One and insisted, Ask them if you don't believe me. They all know about it. William's wife glared at all of them fiercely. Everyone looked down and no one uttered a word. Although she had been fired, her aunt was their chief editor. And even if her aunt wasn't around today, she would find out afterwards if they said anything. No one was going to put themselves in a bad position. Penelope, stop making frivolous accusations. Rachel could no longer tolerate the unfounded accusations. Huh? You deny any relationship with the managing editor? Prove your innocence then. Prove that you've never slept with him. As soon as she said these words, a familiar male voice came from outside the doorway. I'm the evidence. Because it was so quiet, everyone heard very clearly what the voice had said. The crowd turned simultaneously to find the source of the voice, and they were greeted by the sight of a man wearing a resplendent white suit walking in. His graceful gait and elegant carriage gave clear hints that he didn't come from a modest family. Penelope's pupils shrank immediately. Everyone in the office looked astonished. Rachel asked him, Mr. Henry Carter, why are you here? She didn't want to call him by his first name in everyone's presence. Indeed, Henry was there. He stepped forward and stood before her with an angry expression. If I hadn't come here, I wouldn't have known you're suffering working in a place like this. He turned around glared fiercely at the people around, and then grabbed Rachel's hand. I, Henry, the heir of Rising Sun Enterprise, am trying every day to get Rachel to marry me. Do you think that she'd care about promotion or your managing editor? Although Henry might be unreliable at times and may even be quite clueless in many ways, he was good looking and lavish. And when it came to big occasions, he had no problem holding his ground. Compared to him, it was clear that William was a far cry below. Even William's wife was at a loss for words at this point. Between Henry and William, only a blind person would go for the latter. William's wife, beginning to understand the situation now, frowned and glowered at Penelope. You vixen, you, you dare make groundless accusations, even at this point. 
She was sure that this woman was aiming to bully Rachel and then ruin William's career at the news agency. Realizing this, the woman shouted as she dashed out of the office, Don't you dare leave! I'll teach you a lesson! Penelope recalled the beating she had gotten and shrieked as she hurried to the elevator. Unfortunately, the elevator took too long. The woman managed to grab her and gave her yet another slap. Back at the office, Hillary exclaimed excitedly, She shot her foot this time! She laughed out loud. She's finally gone. From now on, we'll be finally left in peace. Henry looked at Hillary and smiled at her pleasingly. Then he turned to Rachel. Rachel, let's go for dinner. Rachel looked at the time and replied, I can't. I have plans for tonight. She had an appointment with Marjorie Plunkett to meet at the DuPont Circle restaurant, so she didn't have time to have dinner with Henry. Henry immediately showed a hurt expression on his face. Rachel, you didn't join me the other time, and today you're not joining me either. He looked so dejected that Rachel quickly shook her head and said, Henry, I do have something planned today. We can have a meal next time. As she said this, she started packing her belongings and headed to the exit. Henry followed behind her all the way downstairs and he was about to say something when Rachel halted and turned to face him. Henry, do you remember what I dislike most? Henry stopped in his tracks. You dislike people following you. Rachel nodded. That's right, so stop following me. I do have a business to attend tonight. Is that okay? Henry opened his mouth to say something, but then he saw that Rachel had already dashed to the side of the road to hail an approaching cab. She got onto the cab without looking back. Henry stood alone by the road, looking crushed. Her decisiveness made her seem as though she was determined to annihilate all the memories from her past. Henry clenched his fist tightly and lowered his gaze with disappointment. He gave a bitter laugh. How could she be so cruel? Rachel arrived at the restaurant 10 minutes before 6 p.m., the meeting time. She walked in, provided the private room number Marjorie had indicated, and went upstairs. The restaurant served an upper-class crowd that respected women. Hence, Rachel wasn't too worried about her safety. As she walked out of the elevator and turned the corner, she suddenly bumped into a dark silhouette. She took a few steps back with surprise and frowned. Then... She looked up. Before she stood a tall man with a rather big frame. He was wearing a loud and eye-catching printed shirt. Because his back was to the light, it was hard to see his features. But in a flash, she could sense his familiarity. As she squinted at the man to figure out where she knew him from, she heard him say, Oh, now you're walking right into my arms voluntarily? When he spoke, his breath reeked of both alcohol and tobacco. His frivolous tone made Rachel frown. I'm sorry. Taking another step back, she moved to squeeze past him. The man then raised his hand to block her path. Oh, so you're playing hard to get? Rachel paused. The man lowered his head slightly. You're quite a beauty. Rachel tilted her head to the side and sized him up. And, but I'm not interested in you. I've seen all the tricks that you women have up your sleeves and I'm tired of them. How narcissistic, Rachel thought. With his smug attitude, this guy was just asking for it. She smirked and replied, Mr. Don't worry, I don't think much of men who are narcissistic and arrogant. With these words, she stepped back and took her to leave. After being rejected in such a way, the man raised an eyebrow as he watched her silhouette disappear. Rachel was able to quickly locate Marjorie Plunkett. Even though she was quite certain that this trip wouldn't bear fruit, she still pushed open the door and entered the room. 
She had expected that it would be chaotic inside the private room. But to her surprise, it was very quiet. It was only Marjorie and her lover, Ryan Armstrong. Both sitting on the sofa, Marjorie had her hand around Ryan's arm. As Rachel entered the room, Marjorie followed her movements with sharp eyes. Ryan looked up curiously as if waiting for someone. But when he saw Rachel, he immediately looked disappointed. Rachel began the conversation by politely introducing herself. Miss Marjorie, I am a journalist from Gossip News Agency. I wanted to talk with you about Before she could finish speaking, Marjorie sneered. You are the reporter who claimed I'm a third party and homewrecker? Rachel pursed her lips and answered, Miss Plunkett, that was my fault. I will make a public apology for damaging your reputation through a news report. Marjorie immediately stood up and walked over to her arrogantly. An apology? If an apology was useful to me, why would I have called the cops? Rachel was stumped. She frowned and looked at Marjorie. So what do you want then? Marjorie gave a mocking laugh. <laughs> what do I want? How about this? If you kneel and beg me, I could reconsider letting this matter rest. Kneel? Rachel's expression darkened. She clenched her fists and gave a derisive laugh. She, Rachel, would bow down to the heavens, the earth, and her parents, but she would never bow down to anyone else. Episode 143. There has been a misunderstanding. Rachel had come with the intention to try and see how the woman felt. From Madrigal's reaction, Rachel realized that she wouldn't get very far. Since this was the case, there was no point in staying any longer. She lowered her gaze and turned to leave. When she had only taken a couple of steps, she heard Marjorie speak. If you dare leave, I'll take your news agency to court tomorrow. I'll be asking for a compensation of $2 million. Also, someone's head will roll. You have the guts to write about Ryan? You must be out of your mind. Every word she said was a threat. Rachel turned back to look at them and smiled sarcastically. You're wrong. My article was about you, not Ryan. Miss Fan, please don't let public opinion confuse you. Even if Penelope had dared to make some changes in the draft, she wouldn't have dared to include Ryan's name. Marjorie frowned and retorted. How unreasonable can you get? You... At this point, she turned to look at her lover, stomping her foot. Ryan, look at that. Someone's insulting me right in front of you. Ryan was calm and stood up as he glanced at Rachel. Following this, he cast his gaze down as though thinking. This matter, before he could continue, someone came to the door softly and said, Ryan, Mr. Taylor is here. As soon as Ryan heard this, he looked up and quickly glanced at the doorway. Even Madri looked up excitedly and looked in the same direction. Rachel was stunned for a moment as she turned and saw Joshua stride into the private room. He was dressed in a light gray suit and leather shoes. His large frame was naturally intimidating, and the moment he stepped in, his presence was felt. However, it was obvious that when he saw Rachel, he was a little startled. He raised his eyebrows and looked very surprised. Before he could say a word, Ryan had dashed over to him, exclaiming, Joshua! His voice was full of emotion and excitement, as though he had just spotted his idol. He was entirely different from the calm person he had been just a moment ago. Joshua somehow decided to hold back what he had been about to say before. He looked at Ryan and calmly acknowledged him with a mumble. Ryan's eyes were turning slightly red now. Joshua, so many years have passed since you last contacted me. I was so sad. When you left just like that, without a word, you didn't care about the rest of us anymore. We're brothers. When Joshua heard this, he pursed his lips for a moment and then asked, 
So why did you ask me to come here? His attitude was a little withdrawn, and he kept a distance. Ryan paused for a moment, and then sighed heavily. He turned to take a glance at Madjorie, who looked as though she couldn't wait for her presence to be noticed, and said, Let me introduce you two. This is Joshua Taylor. I am Madjorie. I'm a supporting actress in the film Ambition. Very soon I'll be working with you. What an honor. I have a lot to learn from you. As she said this, she extended her hand to Joshua. Joshua did not reply and instead looked at Rachel. Why are you here? At this point, Rachel wanted to laugh. She had initially thought that there would be no easy solution for the matter between herself and Madjorie, but who would have guessed that Joshua was going to make an appearance? In addition, it seemed that Ryan somehow knew Joshua. Still, Ryan was the owner of Rising Sun Enterprise, and Joshua was only an actor. Normally, someone like Ryan wouldn't bother with celebrities. However, his respectful attitude towards Joshua puzzled Rachel. So, who was Joshua? Before Rachel could figure this out, Madjorie started diminishing her. What else? She's just a reporter who writes irresponsibly. The article with my name on it was written by her. She's here to ask for my forgiveness. Mr. Taylor, you're a veteran, and I'm sure you have a lot of experience in dealing with these liars. What do you say I should do? Madjorie had a smug smile on her face as she said this. Everyone in the entertainment circle knew that Joshua Taylor hated the paparazzi. And she didn't want to seem too ruthless in front of Ryan. She conveniently pushed the matter to Joshua so that he would play the bad guy instead. She smiled triumphantly at her brilliant scheme and then gave Rachel a fierce glare. I was going to let the matter go initially, but what do you know? This reporter has got some guts. Even her apology is half-hearted. Mr. Taylor, I know that you and Ryan are good friends. If someone were to write rubbish about me, I wouldn't mind. But because the news report has implications for him, it's a different story. What do you think, Mr. Taylor? Madre leaned back and waited to watch the situation unfold. Ryan quickly interrupted her. Joshua has never liked to get himself involved in such things. Why bother him about such a small matter? Let's just ask this junior reporter to leave. Joshua, let's sit and have a chat. However, the next moment, Joshua spoke up. I think... The moment he spoke, Ryan paused and suddenly looked pleasantly surprised. Ever since Joshua had left eight years ago, he had not contacted them. But now he seemed to care enough to intervene in this matter. Madri looked pleasantly surprised as well completely expecting that Joshua was going to give her some suggestions on how to best punish this reporter. However, he said instead, she didn't write anything untrue. As he said this, both Majory and Ryan were stunned and exclaimed, what? Joshua squinted and asked Ryan, aren't you married? Failing to see the light, he replied, of course I am. So she's not your lover. Ryan was flabbergasted. Madjory remained silent. This whole situation felt a little wrong somehow. Madjory blinked and smiled forcefully. Mr. Taylor, you can't put it that way. This is private. How could she put my name in the article? This has serious implications on my reputation. For this reason, I can't be tolerant of this matter. But I am a generous person, and if she kneels and bows to me to apologize, I'll let it go. What do you think? Joshua frowned, and a cold expression crossed his face. She wanted Rachel to kneel and bow to her? In her dreams? Ryan gulped awkwardly and took a step forward. Let's not talk about her. She's just a junior reporter. Joshua, did you come here alone? You didn't bring your wife with you? How could you? You didn't even inform us when you got married, and so far, we haven't been introduced to her. Ryan said all of this in an attempt to change the topic. But after he said this, Joshua gave an icy and unexpected reply. You already know her. Ryan was stunned for a moment. Joshua walked up to Rachel 
and placed his hand on her arm with an expression that made the couple tremble. Allow me to introduce you to my wife, Rachel. Then to Rachel, he spoke, Hey! After this simple introduction was made, the room fell completely silent. Ryan and Marjorie were both flabbergasted. They simultaneously turned to look at Rachel. After a while, Ryan coughed once and said, This... Marjorie interrupted him. This is not possible. How could a junior reporter be the wife of Joshua Taylor? She must have misheard. She widened her eyes and gulped down, unable to accept the reality. But when she looked at the couple again, Joshua was still standing there with his hand placed affectionately on Rachel's arm. Madri's gaze fell on Rachel once more. Only now did she realize that although the junior reporter's clothes were ordinary, her features were delicate and well worth a few looks. She was as pretty as any other celebrity. Ryan confusedly looked at Rachel, and then his gaze went back to Joshua. Finally, he said, Gosh, this has been a big misunderstanding. Who would have thought we're family? As the saying goes, sometimes what we're looking for is right before us. Isn't it so, Mrs. Taylor? Seeing that Ryan had a sudden change of attitude, Rachel felt satisfied. She glanced at Joshua. From the start, she had known that Joshua would be on her side, but she had not expected that he would announce their relationship to them. She couldn't help but smile at the wondrous feeling that from now on, she would be protected. As for Marjorie, she could only twitch her lips and quickly say, So, it seems like it's all been a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? Joshua raised his eyebrows and glanced at Ryan. Is she not your lover? Ryan kept silent. So really, there's no misunderstanding. Ryan, you're still such a fearful man when handling important matters. Are you afraid to take up responsibility for your acts? At this remark, Ryan's ears turned red. He winced and said, Joshua, you're a bit harsh with your words. It's not that my words are harsh. It's that you have bad taste. Ryan kept silent. Joshua put his arm around Rachel's waist and led her to the doorway without even throwing a mere glance at Marjorie. He said to Ryan, See you again. Then, with his arms still around Rachel, they left the room. As they were walking out of the room, they heard someone say with a humorous tone, Say, isn't that my brother? On hearing the somewhat familiar voice, Rachel looked up and saw at once the man in the loud shirt who she had run into earlier. He was now standing right before them. He slightly raised his eyebrow with a look of surprise. His remark was directed at Joshua. On realizing this, Rachel looked at Joshua. At the same time, she felt him halt and tense up. The lighting along the corridor was dim, and Rachel found herself looking straight at the bright colors on his shirt. Now that she was face to face with the man, her mind could finally register his features. Rachel widened her eyes at once and stared at the man in disbelief. Then she turned and looked at Joshua. No wonder she found the man with the loud shirt vaguely familiar. Now that she was looking at both of them, she could see their resemblance. As these thoughts flashed through her mind, she noticed the man gave Joshua a sinister look and then shifted his gaze to her. At once, he put on a joyful expression, reached out his hand, and grabbed Rachel's arm, saying, Brother, this woman is mine now. Episode 144 Bumping into Brother Rachel was so fully focused on what the loud shirt guy was saying that she did not notice what he had done. Brother, yet again. But this time, it wasn't Brother Joshua. It was simply Brother. So this man was... Joshua's expression darkened, and he frowned slightly. Before he could speak, Ryan excitedly called out behind them. Hey, what a coincidence. What are you doing here? As he said this, 
he casually removed the loud shirt guy's hand from Rachel's arm. As soon as the guy heard Ryan's words, he raised an eyebrow and said unceremoniously, Why, now that he's a small celebrity, you're sucking up to him? What do you get out of it? Good for nothing. Ryan turned to glance at Joshua and saw that, apart from moving Rachel away so that now he was standing in front of her protectively, there was no trace of anger in his expression. Ryan then laughed and said, Hugh, come with me. I have something interesting to show you. The loud shirt guy raised an eyebrow and said instead, Ryan, you used to be my brother's lackey back then, and I can see that hasn't changed. What would you have that's so interesting? But on the other hand, I haven't seen my brother in what? Three or four years? Ha! Huh. As he said this, he took a step forward as though he was extremely fond of his brother. However, Rachel could sense a vicious undercurrent in his expression. Brother, how's our mother? Our mother, bingo. The man standing before them was indeed Joshua's brother. On hearing this, Joshua replied deliberately and slowly. She's well. Well, Hugh rubbed his chin for a moment. That's good then. I'll visit her someday. After he had said this, his gaze shifted back to Rachel again. Hey, let's talk about other things. Why, brother, are you interested in this girl too? She's quite a stunner. Then he raised his hand, intending to touch Rachel's face. However, Joshua reached out to grip his hand before he could do that. Hugh raised his eyebrow. Why? It's only a girl. You're not letting me have her? Joshua lowered his gaze and said with a hint of tolerance, Stop fooling around. Fooling around? Why is liking a girl considered fooling around? Only you can like her and I cannot? What sort of logic is that? Hugh chorted coldly and demanded, Brother, this woman, is she even interested in you? Joshua scowled and replied, Back off, now. The warning in his tone was clear. Hugh's eyes flashed and he stubbornly stuck out his chin. What, eight years ago you took mom away from me and now I'm asking for a girl? That's fair compensation. As he said these words, he ignored all reasoning and reached out once more to touch Rachel. Rachel was already behind Joshua, but seeing Hugh's behavior, she recoiled and took a step back. Before Hugh's hand could make contact with Rachel, Joshua's had grabbed him by his shirt collar. He gave Hugh a forceful push that sent the man stumbling a few steps back before he could steady himself again. Joshua sneered. It was you who didn't want to go with mom eight years ago. Why do you even bring it up now? Hugh mockingly laughed and ignored Joshua. He looked straight at Rachel. Hey, beautiful, do you know who I am? Without waiting for Rachel to speak, he continued, This man you're with is the big shame of the Taylor family. He's worth nothing, just an actor. But I, I am the true heir of the Taylor family. Oh, and do you know the Taylor family? Everyone in Washington knows us. When you speak of the Taylor family, everyone will think of us. So who will be more beneficial to you? Surely it's obvious. Come on, make a choice. It's going to be me or him. Joshua's expression was dark and brooding now, like an impending storm. Rachel noticed this and reached out her hand to tug at his sleeve. Then she looked at Hugh as though suddenly realizing something. Oh, it's Hugh Taylor. Immediately, Hugh looked pompous. Well, it looks like you know our family. If that's the case, you should have no concerns, right? Then he stretched his hand out to Rachel. Come with me. Rachel blinked and then nodded, stretching her hand as well. Hugh stuck his chin out haughtily, but as he thought he had succeeded, the hand that was supposed to grab him suddenly gripped his arm. The next moment, the room spun in the blink of an eye. The next thing he knew, he had been thrown on the ground mercilessly. Rachel's skillful shoulder technique left everyone gasping with surprise. Following this, 
She dusted off her hands and looked down at the shocked Hugh, saying, I had to teach you a lesson. You need to be more respectful towards women in general and your big brother's wife in specific. After these words, she changed her tone completely and immediately, like a needy little bird, she leaned against Joshua and chirped, Let's go, honey. The dramatic scene stunned everyone into a stupor. As Joshua and Rachel's silhouettes disappeared into the far end of the corridor, Ryan turned to look at Hugh, who had managed to sit up upon the floor. It had been a hard throw. He suddenly shuddered as he realized that Joshua's wife had probably let him off easily earlier on. Since they left the restaurant, Joshua had had a gloomy expression on his face. Although most of the time he had been expressionless, right now, Rachel knew he was in a truly bad mood. Was it because of you? Rachel opened her mouth to ask, but eventually decided not to. She realized that she barely knew anything about Joshua's life, even though she had been married to him for some time. From the start, she had known that he didn't have an ordinary background, but she could have never imagined that he was from the Taylor family. The Alley family had also owned a renowned family estate at the time, which was why she was familiar with all the great families and enterprises throughout the country. Among the countless corporations, the Taylor family was one of the forerunners. The Taylor family business was involved in many industries, including hotels, transportation, multimedia, entertainment, etc. One could say that they were the leaders in the business world, and anyone in the community would know them. She had no idea that he had such a prominent background. She was still in a daze when she suddenly heard Joshua say, When we get home, don't tell mom we ran into Hugh. Rachel paused and immediately nodded. Okay. From the confrontation between Hugh and Joshua, she could tell that Hugh was not on good terms with Joshua and their mother. Joshua was already unhappy. There was no point in upsetting Anne as well. And now, since Joshua wasn't going to keep explaining, she decided not to probe, just like how he had never probed into her past. The two were silent all the way home. The minute they reached the house and got out of the car, they heard voices coming from the living room. Anne was visiting again. The atmosphere in the living room was extremely warm and inviting. When Joshua walked in, he saw that Anne and Cheryl had already cooked dinner. It was a sumptuous meal, and it gave the house an air of joy and harmony. Perhaps Joshua was in a bad mood, but he hit it quite well, and it didn't show at all. As Rachel observed him, she felt a dull ache in her heart. He had been unhappy on the way back, but now he had to act as though nothing had happened. After dinner, they entertained Anne for a short while before they saw her out and went back up to the master bedroom. The moment they shut the door behind them, Rachel immediately wrapped her arms around Joshua's waist from behind. She could feel Joshua hesitate for a moment, but immediately after, he held her tiny hands and his big ones. The room was quiet. Rachel did not speak and waited for him to say something. After a long time, Joshua finally spoke. Episode 144, Bumping Into Brother. Rachel was so fully focused on what the loud shirt guy was saying that she did not notice what he had done. Brother, yet again. But this time, it wasn't Brother Joshua. It was simply Brother. So this man was... Joshua's expression darkened, and he frowned slightly. Before he could speak, Ryan excitedly called out behind them. Hey, what a coincidence. What are you doing here? As he said this, he casually removed the loud shirt guy's hand from Rachel's arm. As soon as the guy heard Ryan's words, he raised an eyebrow and said unceremoniously, Why, now that he's a small celebrity, you're sucking up to him? What do you get out of it? Good for nothing. Ryan turned to glance at Joshua and saw that, apart from moving Rachel away so that now he was standing in front of her protectively, there was no trace of anger in his expression. Ryan then laughed and said, Hugh, come with me. I have something interesting to show you. 
The loud shark guy raised an eyebrow and said instead, Brian, you used to be my brother's lackey back then, and I can see that hasn't changed. What would you have that's so interesting? But on the other hand, I haven't seen my brother in what? Three or four years? Ha! Huh. As he said this, he took a step forward as though he was extremely fond of his brother. However, Rachel could sense a vicious undercurrent in his expression. Brother, how's our mother? Our mother, bingo. The man standing before them was indeed Joshua's brother. On hearing this, Joshua replied deliberately and slowly. She's well. Well, Hugh rubbed his chin for a moment. That's good then. I'll visit her someday. After he had said this, his gaze shifted back to Rachel again. Hey, let's talk about other things. Why, brother, are you interested in this girl too? She's quite a stunner. Then he raised his hand, intending to touch Rachel's face. However, Joshua reached out to grip his hand before he could do that. Hugh raised his eyebrow. Why? It's only a girl. You're not letting me have her? Joshua lowered his gaze and said with a hint of tolerance, Stop fooling around. Fooling around? Why is liking a girl considered fooling around? Only you can like her and I cannot? What sort of logic is that? Hugh chorted coldly and demanded, Brother, this woman, is she even interested in you? Joshua scowled and replied, Back off, now. The warning in his tone was clear. Hugh's eyes flashed and he stubbornly stuck out his chin. What, eight years ago you took mom away from me and now I'm asking for a girl? That's fair compensation. As he said these words, he ignored all reasoning and reached out once more to touch Rachel. Rachel was already behind Joshua, but seeing Hugh's behavior, she recoiled and took a step back. Before Hugh's hand could make contact with Rachel, Joshua's had grabbed him by his shirt collar. He gave Hugh a forceful push that sent the man stumbling a few steps back before he could steady himself again. Joshua sneered. It was you who didn't want to go with mom eight years ago. Why do you even bring it up now? Hugh mockingly laughed and ignored Joshua. He looked straight at Rachel. Hey, beautiful, do you know who I am? Without waiting for Rachel to speak, he continued, This man you're with is the big shame of the Taylor family. He's worth nothing, just an actor. But I, I am the true heir of the Taylor family. Oh, and do you know the Taylor family? Everyone in Washington knows us. When you speak of the Taylor family, everyone will think of us. So who will be more beneficial to you? Surely it's obvious. Come on, make a choice. It's going to be me or him. Joshua's expression was dark and brooding now, like an impending storm. Rachel noticed this and reached out her hand to tug at his sleeve. Then she looked at Hugh as though suddenly realizing something. Oh, it's Hugh Taylor. Immediately, Hugh looked pompous. Well, it looks like you know our family. If that's the case, you should have no concerns, right? Then he stretched his hand out to Rachel. Come with me. Rachel blinked and then nodded, stretching her hand as well. Hugh stuck his chin out haughtily. But as he thought he had succeeded, the hand that was supposed to grab him suddenly gripped his arm. The next moment... The room spun in the blink of an eye. The next thing he knew, he had been thrown on the ground mercilessly. Rachel's skillful shoulder technique left everyone gasping with surprise. Following this, she dusted off her hands and looked down at the shocked Hugh, saying, I had to teach you a lesson. You need to be more respectful towards women in general and your big brother's wife in specific. After these words, she changed her tone completely, and immediately, like a needy little bird, she leaned against Joshua and chirped, Let's go, honey. The dramatic scene stunned everyone into a stupor. As Joshua and Rachel's silhouettes disappeared into the far end of the corridor, Ryan turned to look at Hugh, 
who had managed to sit up upon the floor. It had been a hard throw. He suddenly shuddered as he realized that Joshua's wife had probably let him off easily earlier on. Since they left the restaurant, Joshua had had a gloomy expression on his face. Although most of the time he had been expressionless, right now, Rachel knew he was in a truly bad mood. Was it because of you? Rachel opened her mouth to ask, but eventually decided not to. She realized that she barely knew anything about Joshua's life, even though she had been married to him for some time. From the start, she had known that he didn't have an ordinary background, but she could have never imagined that he was from the Taylor family. The Alley family had also owned a renowned family estate at the time, which was why she was familiar with all the great families and enterprises throughout the country. Among the countless corporations, the Taylor family was one of the forerunners. The Taylor family business was involved in many industries, including hotels, transportation, multimedia, entertainment, etc. One could say that they were the leaders in the business world, and anyone in the community would know them. She had no idea that he had such a prominent background. She was still in a daze when she suddenly heard Joshua say, When we get home, don't tell mom we ran into Hugh. Rachel paused and immediately nodded. Okay. From the confrontation between Hugh and Joshua, she could tell that Hugh was not on good terms with Joshua and their mother. Joshua was already unhappy. There was no point in upsetting Anne as well. And now, since Joshua wasn't going to keep explaining, she decided not to probe, just like how he had never probed into her past. The two were silent all the way home. The minute they reached the house and got out of the car, they heard voices coming from the living room. Anne was visiting again. The atmosphere in the living room was extremely warm and inviting. When Joshua walked in, he saw that Anne and Cheryl had already cooked dinner. It was a sumptuous meal, and it gave the house an air of joy and harmony. Perhaps Joshua was in a bad mood, but he hit it quite well, and it didn't show at all. As Rachel observed him, she felt a dull ache in her heart. He had been unhappy on the way back, but now he had to act as though nothing had happened. After dinner, they entertained Anne for a short while before they saw her out and went back up to the master bedroom. The moment they shut the door behind them, Rachel immediately wrapped her arms around Joshua's waist from behind. She could feel Joshua hesitate for a moment, but immediately after, he held her tiny hands in his big ones. The room was quiet. Rachel did not speak and waited for him to say something. After a long time, Joshua finally spoke. And he said very simply, when my parents divorced, my mother was granted custody of me, and he got Hugh. Rachel assumed that by this, he, Joshua was probably referring to his father. She could tell that Joshua did not like his father. Rachel immediately comforted him. Actually, it doesn't matter. 20-year-olds can get quite rebellious. The separation of one's parents can indeed hurt the children. But when Hugh grows up a little more, it'll be okay. You'll understand your mom. Joshua sighed deeply and nodded. He had never been an expressive person and certainly not used to confiding in someone else. But for some reason, Rachel's awkward way of comforting him did make him feel a lot better. Joshua turned around and suddenly extended his arms to embrace her tightly before letting her go. I'm going to take a shower. By the time Joshua came out of the shower, Rachel was playing on her cell phone. When she saw that he was done showering, she immediately stood up to head into the bathroom. She left her cell phone on the bedside table without locking the screen. She left her cell phone on the bedside table without locking the screen. As Joshua sat on the bed waiting for Rachel to finish her shower, her cell phone started vibrating. Almost reflexedly, Joshua picked up her phone and saw that there was a message from her news agency group chat. He was about to put the cell phone back on the bedside table when he accidentally read a message that had come in. Rachel, 
Your boyfriend was dashing today. Joshua paused. Boyfriend? After this, he read, That's right. I did a background search on Henry Carter. He's actually from the Carter family. He's the only son and heir to the family estate. Rachel, when are you guys planning to get married? When he read them all, Joshua couldn't help but type a short reply to the group chat. After Rachel came out of the shower, she saw Joshua sitting calmly on the bed, and her cell phone was still on the bedside table. She wasn't sure if it was just her being overly sensitive, but she couldn't shake off the feeling that there was a dark, brooding vibe behind his nonchalance. Rachel dried herself with the towel and blow dried her hair before finally putting on her pajamas and getting into bed. Joshua looked at her twice with an unfathomable expression on his face, but said nothing. He then looked down and continued busily reading something on his cell phone. Not wanting to interrupt him, Rachel picked up her cell phone. Immediately, she received a message from Hillary. Rachel, quickly, have a look at the WhatsApp group. Rachel paused for a second before clicking on WhatsApp. She found the agency chat group and had a casual look through it. Then she realized that she had posted a message. Episode 145. The family reunites. Judging by the time the message had been sent, she had indeed been showering at that time. So how could she have sent that message? Moreover, what kind of message was that? There is a sentence displayed on the phone screen. Rachel, my wife is taking a shower. These words ignited the group chat. Everyone was busy texting and asking who that person could be. Someone even asked, was that Henry? Rachel winced and continued scrolling. Then she saw his reply. Rachel, I am Joshua Taylor. Rachel, the next message had come exactly 10 seconds after the first one, which had blasted away the group chat. Fortunately, the people in the group chat had thought that she was just infatuated with him. Everyone was mocking her for daydreaming. Rachel then looked at Joshua, who was unfazed and calmly seating beside her. His expression was very natural, as if that message had not been sent by him. For that, he looked adorable. Rachel controlled her laughter and put her cell phone aside. Then, she moved closer to Joshua, stretched out her hand to shake his arm, blinked her big eyes, and said, Joshua, were you the one who sent that message? Joshua calmly put his cell phone aside and raised his head slowly. Weren't you in the shower just now? Rachel. So I was merely stating a fact. Rachel. This guy was always so stubborn. Rachel stifled her urge to laugh and said, Are you jealous? Joshua was slightly stunned by her words. He froze and then coughed once. <clears throat> You're true about that. Rachel burst out laughing, and then while looking at Joshua's cool gaze, she stopped smiling and said in a serious tone, You are indeed at the losing end when it comes to this. Joshua raised an eyebrow. So do allow me to make it up to you. As she said these words, she suddenly raised her head and initiated a gentle kiss on Joshua's lips. Then she lay down blushing. But she had just lain down when she felt the warmth of a heated body pressing against hers. Hey, you can't. Rachel was intending to say something, but he covered her mouth. Next, they French kissed for a long time. Joshua felt like he had gone mad. That kiss that she initiated seemed to have instantaneously ignited all the hormones in his blood, making him long for more. How could just a kiss be enough? Especially when he realized that the woman was cooperative, he began to show more initiative as both of his hands groped her body. Within a short period, almost all obstacles were gone. He finally lifted his head while looking at Rachel's blushing cheeks and misty eyes. He suddenly smiled. How can just a kiss be enough? 
As soon as he finished speaking, his hand touched the last obstacle. However, in his haste, his palm suddenly encountered something soft. That kind of feeling. His facial expression darkened instantaneously. When he looked down, he saw Rachel's innocent eyes. She winced and said, Hmm, I am on my period. Joshua. She could feel that the man's body had stiffened. Rachel lowered her head and wrapped herself under the blanket in the fear that he would vent his anger on her. Then, she couldn't help but smile once again. After that, she heard him say while clenching his teeth, Rachel, you did that on purpose. In the middle of the night, peals of laughter could be heard coming from the villa's master bedroom on the second floor, causing the housekeeper downstairs to pop her head out of her room with curiosity. What on earth was this couple doing? But immediately after this, the housekeeper blushed because she had heard the madame's laughter suddenly stop and turn into a low, pleading moan. The next morning, Rachel was too exhausted to get out of bed while Joshua was refreshed and energized. Rachel tried to move her fingers. They were a little numb. She thought about the man's request last night and turned scarlet. It made her heart thump. The atmosphere between the couple had gotten intense and highly charged. She found herself feeling too embarrassed to even look him in the eyes. After breakfast, he got ready to send her to work as usual. Except, as they were about to drive away, Joshua suddenly stopped and frowned. He was looking at a car that had driven into the villa neighborhood and was now approaching them. He contemplated it for a moment and changed direction. Let's pop by mom's place for a bit. Rachel nodded. On the way to Anne's house, Rachel realized that the car that they had been seen driving into the villa was now parked in the courtyard. She got out of the car and then to her surprise, saw the guy with the loud shirt getting out of the other car. Eh? Wasn't that... Hugh? No wonder Joshua had made the sudden decision to come to his mother's place. It must have been because he had seen Hugh's car. As this thought ran through Rachel's mind, the main door swung open and Anne appeared at the doorway with bloodshot eyes. She stared at Hugh in disbelief for a moment. Her quivering lips managed to hoarsely whisper, Hugh? Hugh responded with a sneer and surveyed the apartment. Then he twitched his lips and said, I thought you had left with brother to have a better life. But look at this place. It's not much bigger than the bathroom in our house. Ah, uh, mom, can you put up with this? Although he sounded like he was sympathizing with her, his expression was cold and lacked emotion. Anne frowned and asked, You, are you still upset with me? Hugh replied with a dismissive wave of his hand. Why would I? What is there to be upset about? Upset with you for abandoning dad and me? I should thank you. If it weren't for you leaving me with the Taylor family, the heir of the Taylor family would be him, and I'd be a mere actor. The way he had insulted Joshua made Rachel's blood boil. She could feel the veins in her temple throbbing. Anne reprimanded him. Shut your mouth. You can't speak about your brother like that. Hugh shrugged and said, Fine, fine. I will say no more about your beloved son. Ha. Huh. Then he swiftly changed the topic. I haven't had breakfast. And is there any food left? Anne followed the change of topic and said, Of course, Hugh. This is your home too. Help yourself. Hugh shot Joshua a provocative look, and without saying a word, he walked into the living room. Joshua and Rachel followed behind him. Anne hurriedly went into the kitchen, and shortly after, served him pancakes with maple syrup, which she had prepared. Hugh, as a child, you used to like the pancakes I made. Come, have some. Hugh got up off the couch, 
behaving like he was the king of the house, and strode slowly into the dining room. He took one glance at the plate of pancakes, and an expression of disdain spread across his face. With a smirk, he suddenly reached for the plate of pancakes and lifted it. He held the plate to his nose and carefully sniffed at it. Then he stretched his arm. Relaxing his fingers, he dropped the plate with the pancakes on the ground with a loud thud. The living room was silent all at once. Anne stood rooted to the ground, flabbergasted. The pancakes were now all over the floor, and the maple syrup on the plate had even splashed on her dress. Yet, she stood there as though she felt nothing, staring straight at Hugh. Clasping his hands together, Hugh's eyes took in more of the surroundings before he casually remarked, Oh, I forgot to mention that the food I hate most now is pancakes. Joshua glowered and took a step forward. He was about to say something when Anne and Rachel both grabbed his arm and held him back. Seeing the expression on Joshua's face, Rachel was very certain that he had run out of patience and was going to give the rascal a beating. Hugh, on the other hand, acted as though he hadn't noticed Joshua's reaction and instead turned around and sat on the dining chair. Glaring at him steadily, Anne paused for a moment before she asked in a calm and collected manner, What would you like to eat then? Anything is okay. With this, Anne went back to the kitchen and worked hard for another half an hour before she reappeared. This time with toast and a frittata. Hugh took a look at the breakfast and tapped his fingers on the tabletop a few times. During that whole time, no one spoke a single word. The atmosphere had become awkward and oppressive. Rachel glanced first at Hugh, then at Anne, and finally at Joshua. He was standing there silently and did not speak a word. It was obvious that Hugh was still full of resentment about his mother having left him. The best that they could do now was to let time heal the emotional wounds. Cheryl was also smart enough to just watch quietly without drawing any attention to herself. Seeing that Hugh ultimately did not pick up his fork and knife, Anne finally spoke. Hey, is the food not to your taste? Hugh raised an eyebrow and stood up. He sneered. Not really. It's just that I'm suddenly not hungry anymore. Anne immediately looked anxious. Even if you're not hungry, you should eat a little. Skipping breakfast is bad for your health. Health is what enables you to do great things. All these years, no matter how busy your brother was, he would still eat his breakfast. At her remark, Hugh shut his eyes and snapped. I said, I'm not eating. Why do you care? Anne paused for a moment and let out a deep sigh. Hugh laughed derisively as he walked to the door to leave her apartment. As much as she couldn't bear to see him go, Anne did nothing to stop him. But she did say, Hugh, this is your home too. You can come by any time, okay? The man paused for a moment and turned around. With a scowl, he said, Sure. After he had said this, the atmosphere slightly lightened up. Wistfully, Anne saw him to the door with Joshua and Rachel behind her. As Hugh got onto the car, Cheryl suddenly spoke. Hugh, Hugh stopped and turned around, looking a little puzzled, as though just realizing the presence of this person. Cheryl glanced once at Anne and smiled. It's such a rare opportunity for you two to meet. Why don't you take a photo together? Her words struck a chord with Anne. She stood there looking at her younger son expectedly. Hugh frowned impatiently. I'm not interested. Immediately, Joshua stepped forward and held his brother back by the shoulder. We'll take a photo, the three of us. The force and Joshua's action didn't seem to offer a choice. Anne smiled and quickly walked over to her two sons.